Section 3.2 covers two different theorems that are very related to each other. They both obviously have to do with finding derivatives, and the first of those is Rayleigh's theorem. This little test has to do with demonstrating what Rayleigh's theorem is all about. So I have plotted two points that have the same y value. Your test is to connect those two points with a line that is continuous and differentiable, which means no jumps, breaks, holes, gaps, corners, vertical asymptotes, etc. So basically connect the two dots without lifting up your pen. So you might do this. And what we're looking at is how many places between those two points do I have a horizontal tangent line? So in this case, I have a horizontal tangent line at all of the points between 1, 4 and 4, 4. OK, so what if I get a little silly? OK, well, now I've got one, two points. All right, let's change colors. Let's say I look like this. Well, now I have one point. So make a conjecture, which means make an educated guess about how many horizontal tangent lines there would have to be between these two points. This brings us to Rayleigh's theorem, which says, let f be continuous on the closed interval a, b. So continuous is the first condition and differentiable on the open interval a, b. So differentiable is the second condition. If f of a is equal to f of b, that's the third condition, then there is at least one number c in the interval such that f prime of c is equal to zero. This again is telling us at some point between those two endpoints, there's going to be a horizontal tangent line. So again, Rayleigh's theorem has three conditions. So to use Rayleigh's, I need to check them all. So let's look at our first example. Show that f prime of x is equal to zero. So again, that's essentially what we're trying to prove with Rayleigh's theorem. At some point c on f of x is equal to x squared minus 6x on the closed interval 0 to 6. So this is the function that we're looking at. This is a polynomial function. What I know about polynomial functions is, again, this is going to be a quadratic, so it's going to look something like this, right? Or if it were cubic, it would look something like this. Or if it were quadrat, I'm sorry, quartic, it would look something like this. If it were quintic, it would look something like this. Oops, starting down, ending up. So we get the idea that any time I have a polynomial function, it's always going to be continuous and it's always going to be differentiable. Again, how do I know that? There's no corners in a polynomial function. There's no asymptotes in a polynomial function. So I can knock out one and two very easily, but the important thing is that I have to actually address them. So since f of x equals x squared minus 6x is a polynomial function. Whoops, polynomial function. It is continuous and differentiable. So there I've shown that two of the conditions are met. Now I have to find what is the value of the function at each endpoint of the interval? So f of 0 is equal to 0 squared minus 6 times 0, which is 0. And f of 6 is equal to 36, that's 6 squared, minus 6 times 6, which is equal to 0. So f of 0 is equal to f of 6. Now I've shown that all three conditions are met. It's continuous, it's differentiable, and the value of the function at the endpoints is equal. Now what? Well, now I can say, therefore, Rayleigh's theorem applies. Again, how can I say it applies? Because I've shown that all three conditions are met. And f prime of c equals 0 at some 
zero is less than x is, I'm sorry, less than c is less than six. So I'm saying c is going to occur somewhere between zero and six, and the derivative is going to be zero. Now, again, I can say that because of Raleigh's theorem, so I don't have to do anything else. Essentially, I had to show the three conditions were met, and then I can say, hey, Raleigh's theorem applies, and therefore, at some point between zero and six, there's going to be a horizontal tangent line. Let's take a look at another practice. In this one, it gives us a polynomial function, and it says find all of the values c in the interval, negative two to two, such that f prime of c is equal to zero. So the way that this is phrased makes us believe that they've already shown that Raleigh's theorem applies, but let's go ahead and verify. I'm not going to write it out this time, but obviously you would if this were your question. This is continuous and differentiable, and therefore um, those two conditions are met, again, because it's a polynomial function. And f of negative two is going to equal f of two, which is equal to two to the fourth, which is 16, minus essentially two to the third, which is eight. So both of those are going to equal to eight. Um, and again, you can do the math on those two, but they're both going to equal eight. So I would write all of that out and say Raleigh's theorem applies. I'm not going to for the sake of time. We're going to jump right into the second part of this question, which says find all of the values of C in the interval such that F prime of C is equal to zero. So again, I would need to find F prime of X, which is 4X cubed minus 4X. Again, just taking the derivative of this function. And I have to set that equal to zero because I'm trying to find all of the values where the derivative is equal to zero. So this is 4x factored out, x squared minus one. So I have 4x and then x plus one, x minus one. So what are the values of c? So therefore, c is equal to zero. So essentially, I'm finding what are the x values where this is going to equal 0. x equals 0, x equals negative 1, x equals positive 1. Whoops. So 0 and plus or minus 1. For our last practice, we actually have to do three different things. So up to this point, our first example, all we did was show that Raleigh's exists which is our second step here. And our second example, we found the values of C. That's gonna be our third part here. Our first part, we haven't had to do yet. So it says find the two X intercepts. So why do I have to do that? Well, because in the other examples that we had, we were given an interval. The first one, we were giving a closed interval, the second, an open interval. Now we have to find the interval over which we have to show Raleigh's is valid and then find the values of C. So to find the two x-intercepts, I'm remember x-intercepts are always in the form x comma zero, where x is some value on the x um, axis. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to say f of x or the y value is equal to zero. So f of x is x squared minus 3x plus 2. So this is, again, the regular function, not the derivative, being set equal to 0. And this is x. Again, we're looking for two values that multiply to positive 2 but add to negative 2. So that's minus 1 and minus 2. So the x values that we're looking at are positive 1 and positive 2. So what does that tell me? That tells me the interval is the closed interval from one to two. So that's part one. Part two. Part two says show that at some point between one and two, f prime of c is equal to zero. So I have to say f of x is a polynomial, which is continuous and differentiable. Now, typically, 
I would have to then take the endpoints of the interval and plug them in and ensure that f of a is equal to f of b. But I already sort of did that because here I have determined that these are the x-intercepts. Also, f of 1 is equal to f of 2, which is 0. So Raleigh's, exit, or so Raleigh's applies. Now again, what does Raleigh's tell us? It tells us that, therefore, f prime of c equals 0 at some point where 1 is less than c is less than 2. So somewhere between 1 and 2, we're going to have a horizontal tangent line. How do I know what that is? Well, now I have to find the value of c. So that's step 3. Step 3 says take the derivative and set it equal to 0. So notice on the first step, I had to take the regular function and set it equal to 0. And now I'm taking the derivative, which is 2x minus 3. And I'm going to set it equal to 0. I'm going to add 3 to each side. So 2x is equal to 3. I'm going to divide by 2. x is equal to 3 halves. So at x equals 3 halves, or I can even say f prime of 3 halves is equal to 0. So that's all three parts. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at the mean value theorem, and you will see a lot of similarities between that and what we have just done.